We've really sort of discussed it out there a bit, Amy, of how oddly, and I'm hearing it from the likes of JP Morgan, their view is really we could see big tech outperform the rest of industrials, particularly the banks, real estate over in China, because actually the regulatory hurdles are pulling back while macro headwinds are affecting the other sectors. Does that ring true to you? Well, what's ringing true so far is the, just how negative the numbers are coming out of Beijing. So we're due for some, for some good news, hopefully with the, the tech companies numbers that you're talking about. But let's just talk for a moment about what's just come out overnight. I mean, the latest numbers coming out of China continue to show that high tech manufacturing is down, overall exports are down, consumption is down, property market sales are down, the government, as you just mentioned, Caroline, is reacting by trying to by cutting rates in order to try to stimulate uh, business and consumer lending. But to date, that hasn't happened. They've stopped actually tracking youth unemployment rates uh, because those numbers continue to rise. And overall unemployment actually rose a little bit this past month. And so, again, the overall picture is difficult. So we need to see some good numbers coming from the, the, the tech uh, sector companies. And those numbers need to reinforce yes. that there is potential uh, for those companies going into the second half of the year. Amy, here on Bloomberg Technology, we talk about the Fed and higher interest rates because they discount the present value of future cash flows for the tech sector, right? Impacting public companies, but also by peer proxy private companies. Explain to our audience why China cutting interest rates would impact China's technology sector or help to support it. Well, China's technology sector, of course, has really been um, beaten up over the past couple of years because of the Chinese government's overall rectification campaign, really looking at the tech sector, not helping it continue to grow, but really overseeing some of the biggest companies being taken apart uh, so that the government can control them a little better. However, this year, the story is very different. The Chinese government looking at the overall macroeconomic picture recognizes that the private sector, the most innovative companies in China's private sector being technology companies, need to have the confidence to continue to grow, to borrow money and continue to invest in the domestic economy so that they can get consumers out there spending using some of those tech platforms. And so lowering the rates, what the government did again overnight, is meant to really be a signal uh, to tech companies and other companies in China to borrow more money yes. to continue to grow. Caroline, this is such a timely conversation because we're talking about China's domestic economy and at the same time a lot of the news cycle is about its standing in the world mm. and what international powers are doing vis-a-vis -vis China. Yeah, we're all waiting of course for Ramondo to go out. Of course, I focused on commerce. We've already had Treasury Secretary Yellen out in China, all amid yet more and more sort of adversarial comments coming from President Biden himself when it comes to leadership in China. Amy, from that perspective, how do you see the tensions about us or indeed US investors putting money into Chinese names? Is this something that they should be reticent of doing at the moment? Well, the U.S. government is demonstrating that it does want to restrict some areas of outbound investment flows to China. Just last week, of course, dropping the long-awaited executive order by the Biden administration, which will, um, which will create a notification system and some restrictions, again, very narrowly focused, even within technology on AI, quantum computing, semiconductor, U.S. investment into China, into areas of concern, because the administration sees some U.S. investment uh, flows going to help China's military modernization and it uh, developing its surveillance industry. And so some areas are going to continue yes. to be restricted. However, I do think it's important to say that with Secretary Raimondo on her way after Kerry, after Yellen, after Secretary Blinken already visited China, We've invited China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, to come to the United States. The two sides are trying to navigate this very difficult relationship. Neither side is willing to say they're going to let up on technology yes. so restrictions if they impact national security. Amy, how important a battleground is artificial intelligence to China? 
Oh, it's critical. It's absolutely crucial. And so these export um, export control restrictions, as well as this new outbound investment tool um, to restrict some U.S. flows, um, are going to be very important for China to look at to see if other countries emulate those outbound investment restrictions, specifically in AI, because the Chinese government doesn't really have the ability yet to be able to domestically produce a lot of the technology, particularly the hardware necessary for many of those AI applications. And so continuing to invite, encourage, uh, supervise uh, technology, in, in technology investment into China is important. So important that the State Council just on Sunday released yes. new rules that are encouraging inbound investment into China in many technology sectors.